Hi, Tim here from The Tiger. Now, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen talk from the CSA about slowly reopening things and easing restrictions in some of the dark red zones around the country. Some 29 provinces, including Bangkok, are currently dark red zones. Now, there was talk about the possibility of opening restaurants but requiring paperwork in the form of some sort of proof of vaccination before you could get into a restaurant. And Ben Hart from Integrity Legal, a regular on our Good Morning Thailand program, really arced up about this on his own YouTube channel. By the way, there's a link below to his uh, Integrity Legal channel. So we thought we'd flesh out the issue with Ben and find out a bit more about the possibility of people being required to carry paperwork around them to get into various uh, restaurants and shops and other services. So we welcome Ben to the program. How are you, Ben? Very well, how are you? Good, thanks. Now, you're up in Bangkok, so let's have a talk about what it's been like uh, over the past few days since they allowed people to go back into restaurants, for example. Have you noticed any change? Well, obviously, I mean, I could actually eat at a restaurant for the first time in a couple of months. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little bit more, you, you can kind of palpably feel that people are kind of starting to relax a little bit more, uh, not be quite so wound up when you're sort of out and about. Uh, yeah, but it, it the, definitely the, the big difference is you can actually eat out and um, I, 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 that has been the noticeable thing. Um, but other than that, Candidly, you know, it's still pretty restricted around here. I mean, the curfew is still on. Uh, there's still quite a bit of quite a few things you can't do, but but it's definitely an improvement over the prior week. So you can get into shopping centers, for example, now. Yeah, correct. Uh, although I haven't availed myself of that yet, but but restaurants, yes, most assuredly. And most importantly, people can go and visit their lawyers. Um, so. Tell us a bit about, you chimed up a few weeks ago when there was a rumour that the government was going to require people to have documentation showing that they'd been fully vaccinated before they could walk into a restaurant. You, you had some thoughts about that. Well, yeah, I did. I did actually two videos on it. The first one was kind of just a more general overview and the second one was definitely more of an opinion piece, although they both had my own opinions uh, injected in them. Uh, yeah, I've got serious concerns about this entire notion. First of all, you know, not one, I would like to preface by saying a, a lot of folks uh, seem to think in the comments of my videos that I'm somehow anti-vaccine. That, that's not the case. I don't have any issues with vaccines. I love, I like vaccines. I like living vaccinated. I like not having to deal with diseases in that way. Uh, that said, I have sincere issues and serious problems with this notion of having present, you know, it's it's the papers please society. This notion that you have to present papers merely to undertake basic day to day functions, you know, and and this was not initially discussed purely in the context of restaurants. I mean, they were talking about this just for going. I, it was when I first heard about it. There there seemed to be no limit on what this was going to apply to. It almost seemed like the moment you leave your house, you're going to have to have this. You're going to have to use it to go into the grocery store, to go into a restaurant, to go in anywhere. And that alone, uh, it to me, is very is very scary. You, you mentioned a minute ago about vaccines in the context of travel. And as I noted in those prior videos, I, I want it. You need to discern between what I would call vaccine passports and the so-called COVID pass. Vaccine passports being the documentation associated with international travel. I have some issue with that because there is some history in international travel of needing documentation regarding inoculation. For example, yellow fever shots, malaria inoculation. We're, we're kind of used to that. That doesn't really bother me so much. Countries can basically dictate to foreign nationals what they need to do to come into their country. That doesn't bother me. It's this, it's this pass, if you will, to allow you to live your day-to-day -day life based on a government dictate. And in this case, it just so happens to be the dictate pertains to vaccination. But again, one of the things I brought up in one of those videos, what if they change that later? What if it becomes vaccination and, and you have to wear purple shoes or you know something? 
the, the entire concept of needing a past to live your life, I, I think that's a really dangerous place to be. All right, so as it's transpired, Ben, uh, on September the 1st, they did allow people to go out to restaurants and shopping centres and other things uh, around the red, uh, the dark red zones have been reopened, but we're still required to present those that paperwork uh, showing that you've been double vaccinated if you want to get on a bus or a plane within Thailand. So is, uh, is it okay for transport companies to demand that? I, I have a real problem with it in terms of internal travel. I, I just think that, you know, I mean, much to the chagrin of my friends, they seem to think I mentioned this a lot. Uh, you know, I'm a Thai, I'm naturalized Thai, you know, I'm, I, when I, I don't think I should be required as a, as a Thai to, to need to present documentation in order to get on a bus. Now the government disagrees with me on that, uh, but it, to bring it down to an even more micro level, you know, I definitely think it's a problem, you know, just to go to a restaurant. But yeah, I, you know, there's a certain point at which we have to decide that certain freedoms are just worth the risk. You know, being able to move about and live your life, especially domestically within a given country, the ability to live your life without having to present paperwork at every sort of interchange point where you interact with people or you are getting on some kind of conveyance, uh, that's a society I want to live in. Frankly, I want to live in a vaccinated society too. Let me be clear. I just don't want to live in a society where, you know, they, they sort of are going to dictate to us, you know, what, what we need to do in order to live our lives, especially domestically. Again, international travel, getting on a plane and going somewhere outside the borders of a country, that's a very different thing, but yeah, I, I don't I don't agree either with the with the notion that to get on a bus to go somewhere you got to present documentation. So in the the next few months, we're going to be emerging hopefully from uh, the, the current COVID crisis here in Thailand, hopefully in other parts of the world, and we're going to have more people perhaps coming back to Thailand. So you sort of see it as a bit of a slippery slope that if we start having this documentation, it's going to be required by other businesses. But a private business is well entitled to demand you to produce some documentation if they want to, to walk into their premise or avail themselves of your service. Yeah. And, and, and that, again, different. I think that's a little bit of a distinction between, again, international travel. I already mentioned that. Look, if a private enterprise, you know, a shop house here in Bangkok that's doing, you know, that's a salon or, or you know, a hairdresser or anything, a spa. If they say, hey, look, we really want to see proof of vaccination before we're going to let you in. I, I don't see an issue with respect to that in the sense that that's a private that's a private that's a private enterprise. Now, if you personally don't like that policy, then don't go to that to that venue. Now, here's where, again, I have the issue. It's where the government comes in and injects itself between two private parties and their undertakings. You know, if I walk into a restaurant and the owner of that restaurant is not particularly concerned about seeing all the documentation associated with my, by the way, my personal medical history that's another side of this that you know there's medical confidentiality doctor patient it's sort of thrown out all notions of medical privacy in this leaving that aside you know why is the government injecting itself between two private parties now they'll come out and say public health but there's a certain point especially where you know and i've said this before and i'll say it again yes covid's a bad situation nobody nobody's likes covid but you know, we now know what this is. We know the severity of it. And the question becomes, you know, do we want government intervention at this level for this purpose? And I, I personally think just a mere cost benefit analysis tells me that really, the, it, to borrow a phrase, the juice isn't really worth the squeeze on that. When it was proposed uh, probably two weeks ago, the CSA, the double CSA were looking at asking people to present uh, documentation to get into something as simple as a restaurant. 
did you think it was actually going to happen? Um, I mean, the ties do like their paperwork. Yeah, well, that was, at, frankly, that's why I started commenting on it, because I was afraid it would happen. Um, yeah, Thailand is, I mean, anybody that's ever dealt with a bureaucracy, and believe me, I deal with it every day. Sure. Uh, I, there's a great line from Game of Thrones. I think Tywin Lannister said, wars swallow gold like a pit in the earth. You know, the Thai bureaucracy swallows paper like a pit in the earth. You know, one more piece of paperwork, in my opinion, you know, I, I don't see how it helps anybody. And and more importantly, this is digitized. This is something you're going to carry around with you in, in a, and in a very real sense would track and trace what you're doing and, and how you're doing it on a moment by moment basis. That is really, really Orwellian and creepy to me. Do you think that uh, comes from your sort of American past, the, the libertarian past? Um, we're now in a Southeast Asian country run by a quasi-democratic government that's emerged from a military takeover. Yeah, I, a lot of people have thought that the sort of the combination of my personal political philosophy is definitely a very libertarian, especially by comparison with other na with other countries. You know, I'm a big fan of of the notions that were set down in the American Declaration of Independence, the Constitution. Uh, but setting all that aside, you know, Thailand, even without having it explicitly spelled out in documentation, Thais have always been an inherently free people. And I, I would really hate to see, setting aside the legalities, and getting into the formalities. But just, I would really hate to see the people of Thailand at a day-to-day -day level as a result of, quite frankly, maybe maybe a little bit too much fear, maybe a little bit too much hysteria associated with this, giving up very big, I mean, one thing that I think all tourists that first come to Thailand initially and immediately notice is how easy it is to just live your life here. No, Nobody really, it's very live and let live. And again, to, to make this sort of part of the institutional framework of living here, it's a fundamental change to Thai society that I don't think anyone that sits down and really thinks it over really is going to really want, is really going to like. You know, do you really want everywhere you go and every interaction you have has to go through this sort of medium of your smartphone where you're, you're proving up that you're able to operate in society that's that's a, that's a weird place for any country in any society to be in all right uh, well said what do you think uh, looking through the integrity legal crystal ball do you think we're going to be facing more paperwork as we emerge from this i, I sort of suspect that there are going to be some departments that are just going to be getting all juicy about the idea of having to demand people to uh, present uh, paperwork to get into various government offices i I just see paperwork as something that's uh, looming in the future over this issue. It's a good question. Um, I actually think, and and I think it's indicative or it's indicated, we can maybe kind of see a preview of it in the fact that, you know, they kind of came out with this COVID pass. And then I think at a very fundamental level, even people in the government kind of took a step back and said, whoa, we really want to do that. Now, if I'm running a restaurant, if I'm running a business, if I'm running a spa, if I'm running sort of these businesses that are going to interact with the public, uh, yeah, I could definitely see circumstances where those businesses are now in their interaction with the government may have an extra X number of pieces of paper they've got to fill out every year, you know, in order to maintain, for example, a food and beverage license or an alcohol license. Uh, yeah, I can def or, or some sort of spa or massage license where they've got to prove up an extra level of uh, uh, sterilization or, or hygiene in their operations. I could definitely see that happening. I do think, and I really do believe this, or maybe I'm it's wishful thinking, but I do think the government, when they started down this road, even just a half step down the road toward this usage of this past, I think even at a government level, they sort of said, 
whoa, let's just back that up a minute and and really thought about that. But yeah, paperwork, especially in a business to government interaction. Yeah, I, I definitely think there's a possibility we could be seeing a lot more of that. Well, in this case, at least cooler heads did prevail and uh, we don't need to present our vaccine documents to get into restaurants. Uh, may you get into a good restaurant today, Ben. We thank you very much for your time. If uh, people want to go to your channel, there's a link under this video. As you can see behind Ben, the company is called Integrity Legal. You could do with a better sign, Ben, basically. I know, I know. I've got, I'm, I'm work, working on Okay, thanks for your time. I've got a lot of legal work up here. Not a lot of signage work. Sorry about that. I will speak to you next time. Thank you, Ben. Have a good one.